All right, so Sandworm is this nation state hacking group known for conducting cybersecurity attacks on these industrial control systems and critical infrastructures. With the group believed to be part of the Russian military intelligence team, the GRU, it shouldn't be a surprise that Sandworm has been attributed to several attacks in many countries. So on today's episode of Book Club, we do these deep dives on critical points and interesting facts on hacking and cybersecurity books. We're gonna get into this Dune-loving hacking group who's still at large today. Sandworm by Andy Greenberg is this thrilling expose piece on one of the most dangerous and secretive hacking groups in the world. The group was responsible for some of the most devastating cyber attacks in history, including the Black Energy attack in 2015 and the crippling 2017's Not Pieta attack that cost most companies billions of dollars in damages. But who are these hackers and what really motivates them? Greenberg takes readers on this pulse-pounding journey in the shadowy world of Sandworm, uncovering the origins, tactics, and connections to the Russian military intelligence. Throughout these interviews, you kind of see this, like, the cybersecurity experts and all these different individuals going through and talking about, you know, their their patriotism, the, the different levels of uh, greed and revenge and things that go in place with this threat, you know, group, their their, their goals, the, their reaches, what have you. It's just all over the place. But what's really cool is how Andy paints the picture to where you see just like the the, the human aspect and how they're actually affected by these attacks. So Sandworm is not just this uh, this tale of cyber espionage or you know international intrigue. It, it, it is a tale, you know, a cautionary tale about the vulnerabilities in our digital world and the urgent need for better cybersecurity measures. As governments and corporations around the world struggle to protect their systems from these attacks, Sandworm serves as a stark reminder at the high stakes involved in these ongoing battles. So without spoiling every single aspect of the book, because there is a lot to go into it, uh, the three things I really want to bring up and talk about are the evolution of the cyber warfare and basically the impact it's having on the physical infrastructure, uh, the role of attribution in cybersecurity and the challenges of identifying these nation state actors, and then lastly, just the importance of international cooperation in combating cyber threats. So the first point I wanted to bring up was this whole impact to the physical infrastructure these cyber attacks are now having. Uh, there's actually a beautiful scene that Andy paints in the book where one of the cybersecurity researchers is going through, he's actually like on one side, he's on, you know, sapping keyboards doing his stuff, but then he is like trying to enjoy his personal life and there's like a rolling blackout in his area. He then tries to like go to like a supermarket or something and then because the credit card system's down, he can't buy groceries. So he has to then in turn find a neighborhood where its ATM system's not down and then pull money from that physically to buy a physical train token so they can then move across the way to a grocery store section where the uh, the systems aren't down and it's just this big cascading effect he almost compares it to like a a post-apocalyptic world where like the, the world is ending and like nothing's working it's really crazy but is it like in the ukraine this i think it was kiv i don't remember um, but this is basically like a, he was witnessing the, um, the, like the fruits of destruction in real life. He was trying to, you know, unravel this and try to see well, who was behind these attacks. But then it was also dealing with the legitimate infrastructure falling apart around them. And, and this is something that we can talk about moving forward where the, uh, the attack vector is no longer how many individuals can be sitting in there wave after wave, you know, that's very costly uh, versus if you can go into an environment and then literally lock out the controller of a uh, an industrial control plant, they, they'll literally be just stuck there watching you as you are you know performing these attacks. And then you fine tune, and as time goes, these these attack vectors are becoming larger and easier to distribute because if it's software, you know, uh, and you, <laughs> there's already you know ransomware as services. They, they've invented an entire market because of how easy and scalable this has become. The next thing I wanted to talk about was attribution. And so a lot that we kind of work with here is the, as attacks become more frequent and more sophisticated, we really do have to narrow down who is responsible behind these because if we can knock out um, the head of the octopus, the tentacles will fall off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and essentially, you know, at, at these, these, you know, tech wizard, you know, uh, types, you know, they, they, they're very, you know, attuned in their way to where, you know, 
they, they don't have to, they, the, the threat actors don't have to actually be there to perform the attack, you know, bouncing these off of, you know, jump servers, proxy servers, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, there was a case in the book where they were talking about how uh, the local authorities at Ukraine busted into this facility and held a bunch of like receptionists and typists at gunpoint of like a, like a, a service provider. And what was going on is that basically Sandworm had compromised and used them as like a hopping point to perform their attacks. And so you can kind of see where this attribution comes into play because then you can say, hey, well, these characteristics are, are tied to this threat group. Um, you can then kind of almost understand where they're going to go next. So this is that whole, you know, tactics and procedures, you know, of like how they will move and like what will jeopardize first or they'll compromise this and leverage that, how they pivot. And so by having attribution is extremely important and knowing where your adversary is going to move next. Now, this last part kind of ties the two together because uh, attribution could be important, but if you're making an accusation that a foreign country is doing something and they aren't, um, this is where it can get, you know, really political really fast, obviously. And so cooperation, the third point, of other, you know, entities is extremely important. You know, if the United States wanted to indict uh, Russia's, you know, the GRU, I believe it was in 2020, it was very late after, um, there was like six officers that were indicted for the, uh, the, the attack of the same word had performed because the, uh, the black energy, you know, attacks, it did bleed over into the United States and there was that collateral damage. But if Russia is not willing to cooperate and bring them over, or if they are in the, the United States and we do, you know, capture and take there, these can lead into larger problems. You know, this is now a international conflict, you know, the, the blurry lines of, you know, what is, you know, it, it, it just gets really messy really fast. And, and unfortunately that, that cooperation is extremely important. You know, Russia may not say it's their folks, but if they're Russian, so, you know, civilians, you kind of see where it's like, hey, if you can't prove it, send them back or else, uh, or else, right? <laughs> I think the one thing that Andy Greenberg did really well in this book and, and all the other writers at uh, Wired Magazine, they do phenomenal jobs on these uh, cybersecurity books. I think what Andy did a really good job on was kind of uh, encapsulating the human aspect of this expose because he really wasn't like the first guy there. He was actually pretty late to the game. But what what he brought to the, the table I thought was really interesting was like the, the human aspect. He, he told it in a story where, yeah, you know, there are some technical aspects to it. He does go through and interview the experts and, and brings that information to the table. Um, but you do see like the, the, the hardship, you know, you, you, you see like the individuals who are struggling. He, he, he focuses on the points where it's like, Hey, you know, um, the post office was knocked offline and he kind of went in depth to explain like, yes, the post office is obviously, you know, they're responsible for mail, but they're also responsible for the newspaper. They're responsible for the pension program for retirees in the Ukraine. There, there, there's a, a larger, um, responsibility with the post office there, as opposed to the things in the United States. And so he does a really good job painting the um, kind of the the climactic end where it's like, hey, if we do not fix this now, this could happen not only in the Ukraine and these small places, it can happen worldwide. You know, who's to say if a worm were to go out one day, it would cause, you know, international hardship for everybody. And so he does a really good job painting that doom and gloom without it being, you know, too heavy. <laughs> So if you enjoy learning about espionage, ransomware, or just organized cybercrime, you may also enjoy this video right here. We talk about the art of cyber warfare. Thank you very much and have a good one.